Alas, poor Yorick. I knew him, Horatio. Welcome back, knowledge seekers, to these hallowed halls. If you search for myth, mystery, wisdom, knowledge, you are here and you are in the right place. Today, we are going over some of the things that you had no idea were tools that are. Because I know I certainly didn't. And I ended up going down this incredibly bizarre rabbit hole because of this seemingly innocuous shaped little teardrop of a lapis. That's right. This is the cause of this third video that I had not necessarily intended to do. And it's all because of this. Because on a whim, I looked up, hey, is there a meeting for teardrop shaped stone? And these are actually very common if you have any kind of fine jewelry, pendants, rings, even costume jewelry, realistically, you will see the shape. And there is actually a meaning to it. It is also known as being pear shaped. So this seemingly innocuous little shape represents tears of joy and of happiness, romance, it is supposed to be also a shape of the feminine. It is supposed to spread joy. You know, tears, tears of joy, rain, blah, blah, blah. It's very common in, you know, whether it's costume jewelry, fine jewelry, you will find this shape quite often in pendants and rings and earrings. And uh, I don't know if you'll find it so much in bracelets, but everything else you will most definitely find this shape. It is quite common. Now... Another one that is not terribly surprising, I'm going to show you four examples. Um, if I could figure out where the quartz one, I have four hearts for you. <laughs> so this is a lapidolite heart. I'm sorry, labradorite. This is a heart in labradorite. This is clear quartz. We're almost clear. Got a little occlusion there. This is rose quartz and this is garnet now as you'll notice something like the labradorite it's not quite as heart shaped as this even the the two types of quartz are a little bit more heart shaped but so you might find a heart shape that is a little suspect but it's still you know it attempts to be a heart and that represents exactly what you think it does love attraction, healing, depending on what color you were to use or what type, because don't forget, regardless of what crystal you are working with, what shape it's in, if it's not in a shape, it still maintains the original qualities of the crystal, and then that shape will amplify certain things. Now, again, just to mention, you need to give your shapes or your crystals a job. So while they will seemingly work by leaving them around on their own, because it is an earth energy, earth energies are very calming, they're very soothing to work with, whether or not you set an intention. However, by setting an intention, you have now amplified and kind of ignited the purpose of the crystal, for lack of a better term. So you have set it on its path to do what it is that you intended to do. Now, garnet, it is a protective stone. I think, or is this ruby? I can't remember if this is ruby or garnet. I go through this all the time. I believe this might be, this actually might be ruby, come to think of it, a really dark kind of imperfect ruby. Regardless, with garnet or ruby, Garnets are used to protect things from thieves. So you can take something like this, the seemingly simple shape, put it in with your items, your luggage or whatever, and ask for it to protect your things from thieves along with your know, locks and whatever else. And it will do its job. You have, you have sparked the purpose of the crystal and it will do what its intention was set out to do. So also remember that i mean you can leave these things around as it is and they will do what they're meant to they'll do their thing anyway setting an intention just gives them that little extra push it's exactly what you think it's you know love romance healing care support guidance protection healing transformation um 
It represents the bonds between two people. So you can give this as a gift to someone you love. So this can represent the bonds between two people. It does not have to be romantic. I do want you to remember that. So you can give this to a friend, a family member, um, from a gift from parent to child, sibling to sibling, but it shows that you have bonds of love with that person or bonds of connection with that person that cannot be destroyed. A uh, symbol of hope, healing, peace, harmony, balance, positive values, and it can be, these can also be used to manifest what it is your heart truly desires. So for this simple little shape, it kind of represents everything you think it would, uh, everything connected to love and relationships and bonds, desires, um, passion, keeping that passion alive for whatever you're looking for, whoever you're looking for, or what you hope to do in life. The heart shape is really good for that. Now, another one that kind of is seemingly kind of self-explanatory. Crystal angels. You will see these everywhere. <laughs> They're a very common shape. This is angelite. This is zebra onyx. Um, it is exactly their purpose is pretty much what you think it is to connect to the angelic realms for protection, for communication, for guidance. You know, I use this little one with the collection of stones I keep with my oracle and tarot cards and I use her for readings. This one sits in front of my TV or not in front of my TV off to where my TV is for the sake of the room and you can also use them to help raise the vibration of a room to help offer support to someone. These have no angelic connection to, like, say, an archangel or a specific choir of angels. If you want them to represent a guardian angel, they can. Um, but, again, the, print, the, the purpose of the crystal will kind of also sort of influence the use of the angel so to speak. So that because this is angelite, you can use this to help aid in angelic communication for protection, um, guidance. Whereas this is again, because you're working with so, because it's a layered crystal as in our last video, it has a lot of different uses to it from the yellow onyx to the white onyx to the black. And so, you know, it's protection, it's guidance, it's fault, you know, it's passion, creativity, you know, engagement, whatever you want to call it, however you choose to look at it, but it's, it represents all of those things. So if you are looking to help raise your vibration in a workspace, get yourself a little angelic angel and stick it around and see if they can't help inspire you or protect you or, you know, guide you in some form or another. Okay, now we're going to get into the kind of weird, the, the less, oh no, well, Hold on, I got one more for you. That is, you're actually probably really used to seeing these pendulums. And the biggest things with pendulums is that they are used for the art of scrying. You can use them for communication with your guides, which is also another form of scrying, realistically. And you have to go into a semi-trance-like state in order to use these, or, well, trance-like state may not be the best idea, but you do have to connect to your higher self, your angels, your guides, and ask questions. And as you ask questions, this is me doing it, it will sway back and forth, it will sway to and fro, it will go in a circle. So you have to, to determine with your guides what that means. And you will ask them, what, you know, what's your symbol for yes? What's your symbol for no? What's your symbol for maybe? What's, what does this mean? What does that mean? And sometimes it may not move at all just because Either there is no answer, you don't have enough information, or it's it's an unknown. It's an unknown factor. And these can, I just happen to have my amethyst one. I have a couple of these around. They can be in any crystal. They can be clear quartz. They can be wooden. They can be metal. And you, their purpose is all the same. Um, sometimes you, I think the metal ones, you might be able to unscrew and put some of them, not all, and put like a type of crystal in there, but they will all, they are all meant for the same purpose of 
scrying to receive answers, which is another type of divination. Okay, now on to the weird. This is this next one. I, I was I just happened again. I have one. I just happened to look it up, <laughs> and kind of had a moment of, "Are you joking?" Like the like. So the crescent moon, I, yeah, it's a thing. It's a symbol. You can use it for things. I was incredibly surprised. So you can meditate with this. You can use this for spiritualist practices. Um, and it's used, it's believed to help you connect with moon energy and to enhance intuition and psychic abilities. They can be used for emotional healing as they are associated with balancing in the emotions um, to release a negative energy. So this is also good for any zodiac sign associated with the moon. However, I could be wrong, and I may not be remembering this correctly. I believe the only zodiac sign associated with the moon is Cancer. So, because they are known as the moon children, or moon child. Um, excuse me while I drop and throw things around. Um, but yeah, so I guess it means if you have a Cancer, if you are a Cancer, Cancer moon, Cancer rising, um you can use these i don't know of any other zodiac that is associated with the moon it is best to charge this under a full moon or under a weight and it helps with clarity and transformation balance it it's actually a really surprisingly useful little symbol hadn't thought it was just thought it was when i picked it up i was thought it was cool i happen to like dalmatian jasper it's a really kind of fun, lighthearted stone. I was like, yeah, that's cool. It's different. But you can actually use this for something. So if you have one of these in your collection somewhere, or you're drawn to it and don't know why, this could be why. Maybe you are meant to build up your psychic gifts, or you need some balance and transformation in your life. All right. Now, this next one, I don't own any of these, but this year at the Ren Fairs, I saw a number of them. They make me scratch my head a little bit, I won't lie to you. It's the crystal mushroom. Like, what are we doing with these? Are, are we trying to recreate Smurf Village? Like, is that the goal? Are, are we building fairy villages in the houses and, like, putting these around? Like, they're, they're very cute. They're very whimsical. Are you putting them outside in your fairy village? Like, what what are you doing with these? Because my first thought was, okay, I guess if you have a fairy village, they make a really nice addition. However, if you have any corvids, which would be your crows, your magpies, your ravens, blue jays apparently as well, um, they may not last long because shiny the shiny things will just <laughs> fly away. However, but they do have a use. They they really do. They are ex positive energy, good luck, bring a balance and harmony to life. They can be used in feng shui. So I guess if you're big in feng shui or you're trying to readjust the energy in your home, a couple crystal mushrooms can't hurt. Um, they attract wealth and prosperity and they help protect against negative energy, bad luck, and they bring good fortune and success. So I was I. It's funny because they're not a shape I'm drawn to. I just look at them and I'm like, okay. Like, do you want a little toad stool like from Super Mario running around? Like, it's, I, it's one of those shapes that just makes me kind of scratch my head. They're very cute. They're very small. I also see them just me having bad luck and breaking or chipping them very easily. So, you know what? You do you. <laughs> you set them up and put them around your house. I, I They are cute. They are. Um, some of them are very small, though, and I can see them very easily getting lost. So that is the other thing. But hey, you know what? Enjoy. If you have them in your home, put them in your home. Enjoy them. Keep them around. Um, and now I come to our friend here who has helped me with our Shakespearean entrance. Entrance? Opening? Opening. The Crystal Skull. And no, I'm not referring to the Indiana Jones movie that people like to pretend was never filmed. Um, yeah. Believe me, he's got a use too. 
Like, I just thought it was kind of some, you know, goth Halloween accoutrement that gets sold around. I mean, they, th- this was actually a gift from two very dear friends of mine, and I thank them very much for it because they helped add to the um, ridiculousness of this video and me doing Shakespeare <laughs> via Hamlet. Um, but no, so this is adventure in the specific skull. Uh, at least I'm 90% sure that's what it is. And it's heavy. They are heavy. Um, it's a substantial little piece to have around. But this is also a, to- a symbol of wisdom. Spiritual protection, wisdom, connection to the divine. Used in meditation, here, spiritual healing, um, help to connect with higher realms, manifest intuition, facilitate spiritual growth, symbolize power and transformation, courage, the ability to look beyond the physical world into the spiritual realms. I never, never would have guessed that that was the use for something like this. I just thought it was a fun piece that you would just happen to have around or that, hey, I'm drawn to this. If you do have any of these or you are particularly drawn to this shape, that is probably why you, you know, it is a tool to de- to delve into the higher realms. It does kind of make sense because you will often see this depicted around playwrights, poets, writers, especially the kind of uh, early modern, early American Gothic, um, some Victorians, even sometimes I believe maybe in the Middle Ages, yeah, maybe more Renaissance and Middle Ages. But you will see, you know, this was a symbol of science. Um, archaeol, you know, a lot of people still collect skulls, granted they are older. Um, they still, you know, there are a lot of people that collect human skulls, animal skulls. So yeah, I could, I guess I could see the appeal that, that very primal connection. Um, yeah, that was another one that kind of, I, when I saw that this had a meeting, a meaning, there are a few words that probably YouTube won't let me say anymore that came across my mind. So <laughs> he got added into the repertoire of uh, of videos. What should I name him? Should I name him York or should I name him something else? What do you think? Let me know in the comments what you think his name should be. So that is it. That is all I have for you. Uh, we're going to be moving on from crystals into possibly folk traditions and folk magic. Uh... Oh, I shouldn't say that. There is one more animal, um, one more crystal video that I do actually need to do some deeper research into before going into. Um, it's something that I have wondered about for a very long time. So this just gives me a reason to, to dig into it. So, yeah, that's all we got for you today. Thank you for spending time with us. If you're enjoying the content, please like and subscribe. And I'll see you again next time. Bye, friends.